Hello. Here's my long promised video showing the steps for reprogramming a network module. If you followed my other videos, you already know why reprogramming the network module is desirable. So I'll leave that out and get on with the process. I put links to the earlier videos in the description section. You're probably watching this video because you already bought the device and found the firmware on it to be pretty much useless. But just in case you haven't bought one, here's where you can find them. eBay, Amazon, Banggood, and AliExpress have them. But watch out. Be sure you get the version 2.0 device, not the V.1 device. Here's a quick tour on eBay. found the best search term on eBay is ENC 28J60 Network Module. But you'll also see a bunch of Arduino and other stuff on that search term. And there's one of the devices right there. If I open it up, you get a look at its price and shipping costs, that sort of thing. But what's important is to take a look at those photos and make sure they're not showing uh, uh, both the version 2.0 and the version.1. Here's another one of the devices. So there's plenty available from multiple sellers. Just make sure you're getting what you want. You can also search on 8 slash 16 relay controller. But with that, you're more likely to see the sellers which have pictures mixing the V.1 and V2.0 devices. Uh, what you're seeing there is a V.1. Uh, but this seller also has the 2.0. Let's see if we can find its picture. Not there. There it is. That was a, a 2 dotto. So you may have to contact the sellers and make sure you're getting the right one. So let's take a look at where you can buy the ST-Link V.2 programmer. There's a picture of it there. When you buy one, make sure you get one that has the 4-pin cable with it, unless you already have the cable. They're fairly cheap. Uh, you can get them for as little as 3 or $4 plus some shipping. Uh, depending on where you live, that cost will be variable. And you'll find them in multiple colors. And now let's go look at uh, getting the free software from uh, STM or ST Microelectronics. All of my development work was on the Windows OS. So that's my focus here. You'll need to download the ST-Link driver in the combined ST-Visual Develop and ST-Visual Programmer software. I'll use the document in the GitHub repository for quick access to the links. First up is to download the driver. That's what we'll get right here. And next is to download the software. Since I already have these installed on my computer, I won't demonstrate installation, but my recollection is that it's straightforward. Install the driver before you plug in the ST-Link device. And now let's get the binary images for programming the device. So I recommend that you create a directory like you see here in your documents uh, directory. Of course, your username won't be Mike, so uh, you'll, well, unless your name is Mike, so you'll put your own user ID in there. But otherwise, uh, try to follow the same naming convention for the documents directory. Um, this will be important to you later on should you decide to install the Cosmic compiler and uh, maybe make changes to the code for yourself. And all of my uh, work is based on having the directory set up this way. So uh, that will help reduce the number of 
nuances that you see. You won't need the Cosmic software, uh, which is a compiler, if you're just going to program your device. But it's good to set up the directory for it just in case. So this is the GitHub site uh, that we'll be going to. And uh, the video will demonstrate actually accessing the site. So first we go to github.com. Click on the GitHub search bar. Enter Nielsen M236 slash netmod dash server app as you see on the screen. So we'll search for this. And there we found it. So we'll click on that link. And that takes us to the directory where you can get all the files. The way you do that is to kick on, uh, click on this little code uh, button and download the zip. That way all the files will end up in zip format in your download directory. So now that we've got them in the download directory, we'll unzip the files. There's an extract all to unzip them. Just let it do that in your download directory. Now that they're unzipped, I'll open the directory that they were unzipped into. And we're going to want to copy all of these files over to the documents directory that you created in the uh, steps just before this. And we'll work our way down to the directory where they need to go. Grab all the files. and copy them into our working directory. There they are and there's the files you'll need for programming. So we got all the software and firmware ready. Let's turn our attention to the hardware. First is adding a pin header to the network module for programming. It's fairly simple. I'm just going to demonstrate soldering on the 4-pin header for programming, but you can also add a 20-pin I.O. connector at this time. I'm not showing that because you have a lot of options in terms of adding a male or female header, straight pins, or 90-degree pins, and your application may want the connector on the top of the board or the bottom. Sort of up to you and how you're going to use the device. I'll go ahead and speed this video up so you don't have to watch all my soldering steps and so that you don't fall asleep. Now that the header is soldered on, let's connect an Ethernet cable to the PC or laptop. I recommend directly connecting the PC or laptop to the board you're reprogramming for initial, set, initial setup. Now let's connect the ST-Link cable to network module. Here's the diagram from the GitHub documentation. Notice the wires are not straight across from the ST-Link to the network module header. They're shifted down and the last one wraps around to the top. So pay attention to this when connecting the cable. You'll see me connect them that way in the video.
now that we're hooked up, I'll reach down and power on the network module. My power switch is off screen. That's done. And now we go on to actual programming. Of all the files we copied, we really only need two files for any given network module. The various binary and project files were already created for you. For this video, I'll program a brand new network module with the 8 output, 8 input configuration. The files I need have dash 8 out in the file name. Important to note before programming is that the factory fresh modules have their software protected with the readout protection bit. This keeps you from reading the binary image on the devices. Not, not that there's much there worth protecting. Anyway, we need to clear the readout protection bit to reprogram the devices. And this will erase the program in the network module, the one that came from the factory. I caution this erasure is at your own risk, but I can also say I haven't had a single problem in hundreds of programming cycles. So here we go. First I'll start the STV programmer software. On my laptop I created a desktop link to the program. It takes a moment to start, so we'll wait for that. Once started, you've got to select the STP file for the configuration you want. As I said, I'm going to select the 8 output, 8 input configuration file. Once the binary image shows up, which takes a moment, there it is. Now we have to clear the readout protection bit. This is done by selecting the Option Byte tab. Note that Readout Protection is uh, Readout Protection Off is selected. Now click the Program tab, and then Current tab means to program the current tab. The Readout Protection bit is now cleared, and the device is erased. By the way, if you forget to clear the readout protection bit, you'll get errors. And in fact, while creating this video, I forgot that step, and you can see the errors in the progress window. But of course, I'm not going to show all that in the video, and I'll just share the right way to do it. Next, click on the Program Memory tab, then click on Program, and then click on Current tab. You should see the message Program Memory Successfully Verified in the Progress window. So we're done programming the network module. Now we'll communicate with it via the Ethernet port and change the default setup to one we want. So we disconnect the cable and first thing I'm going to do is verify that my laptop Ethernet port is set up to match the subnet range of the default settings of the network module. This is a quick demonstration of how to do that in case you've forgotten. First thing to do is to right click on your network symbol in the lower right Select Open Network and Internet Settings. Select Ethernet. Select Change Adapter Options. Right click on the Ethernet symbol. Select Properties. Select Internet Protocol 4, version 4. Select Properties. Make sure use the following IP addresses selected. Here I've selected 192.168.1.100 for my laptop so that I'm in the same subnet range as the default settings of the network module. Now I'm going to close all these windows to get them out of the way. After we get done with this initialization process, don't forget to come back to these settings and restore them to whatever you had before we made these changes. Okay, in a browser, let's enter the default IP address of the network module, which is 192.168. 1.4. And I'm waiting. Oops, forgot that the default port number is 8080. Let's add that. And here's the reprogrammed GUI interface. Now we can set up the network module address settings to something that will work on the targeted network. I'll click on address settings. Then set the IP address to 192.168.1.183 and the port to 80. And I'll change the MAC address from the default just to make sure it is unique should I add another brand new device to the network. 
Last, I click on Save to put the settings in EEPROM on the network module. I'll click on the I.O. control button just to see if things are working, but it won't work because I've changed the network module IP address. So, I'll have to enter the new IP address in the browser. I don't need to enter the port number in this case because the browser will assume it is port 80 if one isn't specified. Hmm, maybe it didn't save properly. This is taking too long. Let me go back and check the default. Uh, oh wait, there it is before I could finish typing. I forgot that when you change a device's MAC number it could take a little longer for it to respond the first time. So be a little patient when you make address uh, setting changes. But here it is, so let's check that address settings look right. Yep, just the way we left them. Now I can put the device on my network and access it without a direct cable. And that's it. If you have difficulties or find a bug or have improvement suggestions, leave a note on the YouTube site or contact me at the nielsen.projects email address in the documentation. I'll do what I can to help you. Thanks for watching.